version from cash to electronic payments. So uh, first of all, thank you all uh, for, for joining us. Um, we already had the, the, the introduction, so I'm going to actually skip that uh, deeper into introduction in the interest of time. Uh, one of the first things uh, that I would love to get your perspective on as a panel is, uh, so we all agree that there's a huge potential for India, like we heard from uh, uh, Rajan, and we, we heard that in uh, multiple sessions that payments is going to be the next big thing, right? Uh, you guys are all taking a slightly different tack at uh, 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 attacking that problem. So we'd love to get your perspective on what has been your learning. So maybe, Naveen, I can start with you. You have been uh, kind of driving this for the last, what, six, seven, eight years. We'd love to get your perspective on what you think are some of the learnings. Can I first request the door to be closed? I think it's too much of a noise, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, so I agree with you, Puneet, first of all, that cash is king. And India is still true, though I have been in payments industry now for about eight years. And unfortunately, this statement has not changed yet. Uh, but it's also an exciting piece because all of us sitting here are also eyeing that cash that how can we move into electronic. So interestingly, in India, about 97% of retail transactions happen all in cash. And these are all accounted cash. So don't worry about black economy. That's separate. We don't need to solve that yet. First, let's attack these 97%. And there are a lot of exciting ways to try and doing things. Uh, while the potential is very large, if you see on the wholesale payment side, the growth has been more than almost 100% in five years. On the retail side, it's growing pretty fast. But the pace has been slow. Interestingly, there's also a report which has come and said, and RBI has actually taken a vision very clearly that we have to move towards less cash from cashless now. This is that. The report says uh, that if you move 1% from physical cash into electronic economy, the country saves in direct cost of printing currency and storing currency, forget other benefits, close to 100 crores. So 1% is equal to 100 crores for them, direct benefit. So there are huge incentive for all of us to do this business from a multiple perspective, not just from a business perspective. Well, I'm going to come back to, uh, you say it's been still slow, I'll, I'll come back to that question, but let me actually ask uh, Jitendra. Jitendra, you are taking a different act at kind of uh, driving electronic payments, which is so far looks like purely digital, right? right. Uh, what has been your, your experience and something that you'd like to share with the audience? Sure. So, uh, very frankly, as a Citrus, we are like focusing on more on banking on the electronic channel, which is already existing. Now the question is that people have cards today, people uh, have net banking accounts, but they're still not transacting. So how can you make them transact online in a faster and a seamless manner? And that's the approach uh, as a company we took where we said, when we used to go and meet merchants, every merchant used to ask us three years back, why PayPal is not here in India? Why Google Wallet is not here in India? Is the regulation stopping them or what exactly is the problem? So we said, okay, there is an opportunity to build a local PayPal in India, and that's where Citrus came into existence, where we sort of uh, opened a wallet for the people, uh, and the, the consumer could transact across merchant websites without the needing of going through five-step checkout process, without the needing for entering the card data again and again. And we had, so initially, very frankly, we faced a huge resistance in the market, where a merchant was saying, no, it's my consumer, I will not allow. We, 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 we just broke our head explaining to the merchant saying that first let the consumer transact, then you claim it's yours or his or who else consumer. And that's where we uh, put our bets on and now we are seeing a fairly good adoption where uh, the consumers are adopting this, they are becoming more and more comfortable because the consumers are seeing the brand at many merchant sites. So you know the initial apprehension, okay, should I give my card, should I give my should I give my card data to this guy? Should I not? Should I enter? Should I not? So we are sort of taking away that uh, particular uh, 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 pain from the customer uh, angle and making their transaction more seamless. Just to kind of dig a little bit deeper in that, so what do you think are, is changing that people are becoming more open to adopting these uh, electronic uh, payments? Sure. So I would say it's more of a trust aspect. So when a consumer sees first time, and suppose the XYZ sites, like today if I look at it, uh, like there are in country there are like 20 odd sites which ask them to save the card data on their individual sites but they're not thinking from a consumer perspective like I will not name the company like the travel companies are saying save the card next time your travel purchase is faster the e-commerce companies are saying save the card next time your e-commerce purchase is faster the recharge company is saying so but think from a consumer standpoint he's saying to how many people should I give my card data and is it safe not safe this guy is into 
selling business, this going to recharge business, is he capable of controlling my car data in a secure atmosphere? So from that perspective, when a consumer was seeing uh, uh, Citrus at Merchant 1, Merchant 2, Merchant 3, so of course the consumer is not signing at a first go. So he's seeing five or six times and then we see the sign up happening from the consumer side and that's making him more and more comfortable because the next time he realizes, okay, there are a thousand odd merchants where he's going and can use his uh, stored account uh, everywhere. So kind of taking a more consumer approach is actually helping adopt yeah. and driving that adoption. That's right. Uh, uh, I'm going to actually move to, to you, Vikram. Uh, you, you guys are uh, driving, trying to encourage the move away from cash and delivery to card and delivery. How, how's, how are consumers reacting to that? What has been the, your, exp uh, your experience so far with that? Um, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, the, the solution of moving customers from cash and delivery to card and delivery doesn't really address the problem of COD. So I just want to make that clear. So this is not a solution. Still, the same cost exactly. uh, applies to you guys. Absolutely. So the lack of commitment to a purchase still applies because upfront, you know, customers choose to pay by COD, and then later they choose to pay by card when the goods are delivered. Huge benefits. So uh, the three most important benefits that we've seen is, uh, you know, it, it uh, takes away the need for cash management by our logistics team, and that's a huge benefit because. You know, believe it or not, our delivery associates are really smart and they know how to float money around, right? So it takes away the need for cash management. Uh, secondly, it takes away the need for delivery associates to, you know, have exact change ready uh, when they deliver the goods. And uh, again, this is a huge issue uh, affecting the productivity of our uh, delivery uh, workforce. Uh, you know, more often than not, you know, you end up going to deliver a, a package to a customer you actually have to drive that customer to an ATM to get the money, uh, you know, to get paid. So, uh, again, you know, their productivity gets lost, so it addresses that issue. And from a customer experience standpoint, again, they don't have to have exact change, right? So that, that completely goes out of the door. So do you yeah. see more people using uh, card and delivery as you're giving them the option? Yeah, so it is growing. I wouldn't say, you know, 100% uh, are using. So, but we've seen adoption rates anywhere between, uh, between 10 to 40, uh, even 50%, 10 to 50%. So uh, what that means is in some areas we've seen 50% of the customers actually use a card at the time of delivery. And, I, I, you know, again, we haven't done any uh, hard analysis on this, but we feel it depends on one, you know, uh, card penetration. So, for example, in Bangalore, in Delhi, the, the card usage is very high. Uh, secondly, it also depends on software issues like, you know, promotion and, you know, the delivery associate right. making sure they're aware of that option. So you, you guys have just like launched a few months back, and you're already starting to see some good good uh, absolutely. From the so consumer. we've been live maybe a little more than a month, okay. and uh, so it's live um, in more than 20 cities now. Okay. Kunal, when you and I spoke, right, I invited you to to the payments panel. You said I'm not a payments company, right? Uh, you you are taking a very very different approach to really driving electronic transactions. Your transactions are all pretty much 100% electronic, right? Uh, could you, could you talk a little bit and, and tell the audience as to what you, got, what you are doing to, to kind of really promote electronic payments? Sure. Um, I'll take a step back onto your first statement when you said uh, uh, payments is the next big thing. I think payments became the next big thing when currency was invented. I think payments became a big thing at that point of time. I think the, the question is the behavior change that we are trying to drive from a cash to electronic. That is the thing that is being discussed over here. Uh, uh, and I will step back and talk about human behavior. Uh, we do not change anything unless a strong reason is given to us, right? Uh, I do not buy the justification that there are not enough cards, uh, not enough payment instruments. If that was the case, IRCTC would not be doing six, seven lakh transactions a day, or Ashish would not be selling a, a cricket match sold out in four hours. Uh, we are failing to give reasons to customers to transact. We are just assuming that just because I've opened up a store, everyone should pay. It does not work that way. Uh, I would like to ask this audience over here, how many of you have bought a physical good in the last 30 days online? A physical good? Many, actually. Yeah. All right. It's still more like 50%, and this is the panel at NASCOM sure. for the conclave. All right. Uh, take this to a wider audience. It will be probably 2%, 3%. Uh, there is no reason to come online and buy, right? I believe there are two ways uh, one would change behavior. One is I have the need of changing this behavior or I have the greed of changing this behavior, all right? Uh, the need is IRCTC. You have a choice of standing in the queue at the stadium or at the railway station 
or figure out a way to learn transacting. Like my dad learned to transact because he just had to learn it because he wanted to buy train tickets. Uh, and you talk about uh, greed. You give me a 10% cash back, I'll figure it out, right? The point is, is it sustainable, yeah. right? So at free charge, what we did is we married need and greed. So we took a recharge and married it to couponing, kind of invented a model in India. Uh, uh, we are the, probably the first proud company which is copied by six companies in India. Uh, 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 <laughs> and, and, and that is only possible when you address a consumer need. Uh, I, I remember uh, my first time I actually did a meeting with an e-commerce OTA uh, in my startup days in the sixth month. I was doing six times more transactions than them. And I thought IRCTC was a benchmark. So, so, so the key point is to kind of really create that, address that consumer need, right? What are you really trying to solve for the consumers, right? Uh, so, so Jitin, uh, kind of uh, uh, tying to that, uh, so when you look at, you're trying to build PayPal, Wallet, uh, when you look at wallet adoptions across the world, right? Uh, they always started with some that core need, right? So uh, if you look at PayPal, that started behind eBay, right? Uh, if you look at Octopus Card, which is now a wallet, right? It started with a Metro Card. What, what, do you, what do you see is that is that need in India that would really take us to the next level from a, from so a wallet pretty, perspective? So pretty difficult question you are asking me, but uh, very frankly, uh, when I look at the market, and uh, the Indian market is very, very different from other markets uh, in the world. So like if I look at e-commerce, e whether there is any marketplace which can uh, lead to creation of wallet in the country, uh, personally I don't feel so. Uh, the reason for that, if you look at the 70 to 75 percent of the transactions are COD, so uh, those customers are not paying online. And out of the 25 percent customers, the 40 odd percent are net banking, that, that leaves the card customers. And out of those card customers, only one out of six or one out of seven will create the wallet. So from that perspective, it's difficult to achieve a scale if you have to bank only on the e-commerce. Similar way, uh, Kunal, don't, uh, I'm not targeting towards you, but uh, if it is a recharge, personally I feel the value of the customer is just 50 bucks, 100 bucks. So that also, uh, while there's a need uh, uh, for the customer to come online, but whether he will actually put up the money there, uh, say 1,000 bucks for a bus ticket purchase, I don't think so. So it has to be a multiple uh, combination uh, of multiple options where the acceptability is at multiple channels, which sort of has the need. So it could be recharge, it could be uh, the organized cabs, it could be movie tickets, it, 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 it has to be like now the metro is starting in the country, and it has started in Delhi, it is starting in Bombay now, the Bangalore is starting. So I think the combination of all these factors, the company which is able to capture all these categories, uh, pretty quickly and pretty swiftly would be able to create a wallet. Uh, actually, you asked a very in interesting question and I, actually, I tend to agree with that, that most large payment companies, whether you call them card or a wallet or across the board, they always had one large application and I fully agree with what Kunal mentioned about need and greed. I mean, I call it convenience and, the, and let's say a cost. I mean, cost could be either a positive or a negative. And, of course, we are assuming that the trust and credibility is already established, otherwise nothing starts. I would also like to add, India is divided into two parts. From a, from a financial payments perspective, you have people who have bank account, so they can use net banking. Of course, a very small portion of them use it. Then you have a debit card, which is around 13%. Then you have a credit, which is about 1.5%, and keeps going between 1% to 2%, depending on the overall credit profile in the country. Now, it leaves you about 80% of population who today have access to technology. They have phones, they have uh, internet, they have cyber cafes, they go to office, colleges, they have access to internet. And this is where all the example you said, our own history has actually built upon these needs. We started with the DTH platform, where there was a need to collect from every householder money, which in absence of a person going every month, how would you collect money from them? From there we moved on to IRCTC, where we are the largest currently today, amongst the non-bank and bank put together. So we actually looked very clearly that if there is a need, consumer will find a way. And actually, though Viswa said 1,000 plus cities, actually more than 3,500 cities, we are seeing transactions where we already present. So actually, it's beyond district headquarters. So I fully agree it's not about having a card. It's not about having a bank account. It's about having a right value proposition for a customer. Is he getting benefit? Is he getting saving his cost? Is he really finding it? Technology is all about time and geography distance, right? Is he really able to reduce that? And that's what is impactful. If you deliver that and you make sure that there is no compromise on a trust and credibility. If I give money, it actually got recorded as a debit and credit. It's as simple as that. 
Sure. If I reloaded, it actually showed that yes, it is reloaded. If I paid, then, well, it's been an interesting one. And then there are a lot of innovative use cases like transit toll is still yet to be proven, fundamentally because of business model reasons, not because of that the technology can't be made or not because that it can't be delivered. It's primarily, so to give you one example, why can't there be octopus in country at this stage, unless the government thinks very differently. Octopus or oyster card, if I give you another example in UK, they were possible in those countries because the ownership was taken by the owners of those transit solution, which is government behind it. For an example, Oyster Card in London was issued by, under the mayor of London, who is a single entity who controls both buses and tube system, as they call it there. So they could roll out a card, they spend money to invest to create infrastructure. Now here in India, if you go to any authority, if I give example of BST in Bombay, we would go, we want to do a transit card for your BST. Now the first question would be, okay, you want to do it, go ahead, do it. We will not give you a single paisa. You want to invest, you invest. So the biggest beneficiary, if they are not going to invest, how is your property going to be safe on those buses? How is your customer going to value it? So the issue here is that if the biggest beneficiary don't invest behind it, is it a right business for you to go after and create that solution? While there is a solution need, while everything else can fit in, but in absence of such ownership taken by the right authorities, this model cannot flourish. Hopefully it will change as more and more privatization is going to happen. So from these online sites, so again, while there are two side, two division on the customer segments, there are also two divisions on the type of transactions you do. One is in a retail environment, second is an online environment. Online the need is stable is if I don't have a debit card, credit card and a net banking. And if I want to buy a ticket, obviously you need an alternator, which is played like us. We will give an option to you, which otherwise you never had. So the need is already there. We just need demand exists, we do supply in a convenient and a cost friendly way. There is a bigger challenge now, which is an open retail market where you're actually tooth and nail against currency, where I'm standing in a, in a superstore. I have in my pocket a card. I may not have a card, but I have a cash, which works. Now, how do you compare that experience that if I'm giving him a cash, the transaction gets done in a few seconds versus if I have to do anything else and what additional value proposition you're giving him sure. to motivate and change that behavior? So, so let, me, let me actually uh, ask you this. So, so we all agree there's a lot of potential. We all agree that we're making great progress. There are a lot of challenges. You as leaders have been deep in, in the payment space. Where, how far do you think we are from the infection point? So on, on the scale of like one to five, do you think we are at the infection point like in the next year or so? Uh, maybe, uh, uh, Kunal, you can? Uh, uh, I, I'll go back to the Maslow's hierarchy. Uh, we will not learn to buy a shirt online before we learn to pay a bill online. This country, uh, only a fraction of customers are paying their bills online. You cannot expect the shirts will go faster than the bills. So back to the manner, you cannot expect to jump to the level three pyramid before anyone has gone through the bottom of the pyramid and really gone up. I, mean, I think the behavior will change with need-based transaction to desires and probably aspirational stuff. Sure. Vikram, a question to you, uh, kind of on, on, as, a, as a retailer, right, what, do you, what would you like to see as innovations in kind of really driving electronic payments? Because I'm assuming that the benefits for you are pretty, pretty large, right? So, so for, for the audience who are aspiring entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs right here, what, what, what would you say are the areas where you would love to see some more uh, traction? Right. So I'd just like to give a little bit of a background on the benefits that uh, you mentioned. So for us, if we are able to, uh, you know, uh, shift people from COD to CARD, then the benefit is amazingly huge, right? So it's a, it's a direct one or two percentage uh, improvement in our operating margins. And that's because, you know, when you buy via COD, you're not committed to the purchase. So uh, almost more than 50% more than of our returns are by COD customers. And we notice a return rate of less than 1% for our card paying customers. So there's a huge benefit in terms of moving people from cash to card. Now, what do we see as the things that need to happen? Now, let me just start at the basic level. I think, you know, if we can have much better successful transaction rates. Uh, so today we are seeing 60 to 70% success in, uh, you know, card payments. So if we can see that go up to 80%, I think that's huge, right? If we can, you know, uh, so we've just gotten a PCI DSS certification. So if we can kind of use that uh, to actually allow uh, a one-click checkout for customers or maybe tie up with something like Citrus Pay to make that happen. So that would be great. So basically making the checkout flow, you know, uh, uh, completely brain dead simple. I think that would be something that we're looking to. But I think on a larger perspective for all these things to happen, 
I really don't see one or two players uh, really changing this, changing the scenario, right? A lot um, of people kind of... Yeah, and a lot of the solutions that are coming up in terms of recharge that work well for low ticket purchases, but for sites like us, we don't see that working very well right now. Maybe that will change, but right now we don't see that scaling very well in terms of uh, higher ASP purchases. So I think in terms of solution, I honestly think we need some sort of a consortium based approach where, you know, I think uh, Naveen was mentioning, you know, we need a push from the government. Uh, you need the government in it. You need the banks in it. You need the telecom companies in it. Uh, again, you know, to get over KYC, you probably need Aadhaar in it, but you need a consortium based sure. approach. That's great. Well, so we have about eight minutes left and uh, I'm going to actually pick that uh, uh, up a little bit and uh, ask uh, one of the panelists to actually dig a little bit deeper and then we'll keep five minutes for the open session. Uh, so, so Naveen, on, India is a, like as, as you mentioned, we need some support from government and India is a very regulated country when it comes to payments. What, uh, what would your thoughts be, suggestions be to the government, the RBI and, and, uh, and Aadhaar and we have actually a session following up. What would your request be from them to help and kind of grow this ecosystem? So I think regulation, which has come, I mean, in our last years, uh, last eight years, we saw regulation came out four years back. So first four years with no regulation. So first of all, regulation is important because you're dealing with public money. And trust and credibility is a fundamental pillar without which it cannot sustain. So that's the right thing to do. There's only one key issue that we've always been discussing with regulators, in specific with RBI, that in India, everything that you do in physical cash, up to 50,000 rupees, there are no questions asked. The moment you switch it to electronic, be it card, bank, non-bank, wallet, or a card, you're asked full KYC who you are, where do you live, address proof, everything. And as we said, ultimately human behavior is about, like you just mentioned, need and greed. If this, you're already fighting those issues and on top of that, if I can do something up to 50,000 rupees without any question asked, and if I have to give all that information with which I can, otherwise would have bought, taken a bank account, why should I do it? So that's one fundamental level playing field we have been talking to RBA. I think they have been very progressive. There has been consistent changes basis the discussion. Uh, we have now a Payment Council of India as a body from the payments all non-paying players. So there's a regular interaction. So we're moving on the right direction. I guess that should change. Interesting piece, Aadhaar, which I think uh, most of us are now, especially non-bank players, are working very closely with them. Two areas where I think it's very, very useful. One is because there is an obligation of KYC on us, if you have to go and do it in a physical process, it's very expensive, mm. especially with the kind of transaction size and the audience we are dealing with. That will help us solve that problem. And for customer, it will be much more seamless and sure. an easy process. So it's not only expensive, we also see a lot of fallout, right? Because people don't Absolutely. do that whole, the whole process. So there, if he has to just go and give his biometric authentication, and which is live with most of us, and where we've done enough pilots by issuing already about 100,000 plus cards, other authenticated full, it's assumed as a full KYC, you already do everything. It's obviously much more seamless process, less costlier. There's interestingly, besides that, there is a, there is a discussion happening around how do you use Aadhaar in mm -hmm. a long term to transfer benefits, direct benefit, which there is a talked out subject in all the media. Sure. Now, the real beneficiary, there are 60 to 80 percent who do not have a bank account, right? About bank, let's say about 50 percent. If you expect them all to open a bank account in next 12 to 18 months, I think we are asking ourselves too much. So we need to find alternatives, and that's where we believe non-banks and Aadhaar can play a better role, where even we, the money can be redeemed through these instruments sure. using Aadhaar sure. authentication. Sure. I think there are movements already in that direction with NPCI also playing a role in there. Uh, of course, Dilip is going to talk about it, so I shouldn't be stealing that sure. point from him. So that's in brief. I'm just trying to dive deep and yeah. touch upon some yeah. of the points. So I just want to add, uh, uh, sorry, I already have. Yeah. So I just want to add two points uh, uh, to the Naveen. Uh, so I think uh, one more scope where personally I feel uh, NPCI uh, should play a role more aggressively is the P2P transaction. Because today, if you look at the P2P transaction, uh, it's a pain if I have to pay you if you go out for lunch, right? If I don't have a change, how do I pay to you? I ask your number, I registered you as a beneficiary, then I pay to you, it takes some time, though IMPS is faster, but still I need to register you. So from that perspective, if NPCI sort of ideally, I don't know what's the way to open up the APIs for P2P and let the startup companies innovate on top of those APIs. Of course, the regulatory framework Can has I just to intervene? Actually, it's sure. already live. You should talk to the lip. I think Oxygen is here. We as its case are already there. There are three PPIs already live. But still, you're a PPI, PPI, I'm saying. What yeah. I'm saying is I don't see the risk involved in the whole thing because if I'm transferring to my friend money yeah. to his bank account, 
why should there be a PPI license from RBI? So, getting my point, what I'm trying to say. So, I'm saying PPI is when yeah, I think you're talking regulatory, it should be opened up for yeah, everyone. So I'm saying, I'll, I'll add just one point. Sure. Sometimes, uh, India, the regulation is the moat of the business. <laughs> So that's one thing that we have to be careful about. Uh, it's not open for all party. Uh, you have to figure out a way out in. Uh, there is a lot of room for a lot of companies to do a lot of interesting things. Uh, this regulatory animal kind of scares a lot of people away. Uh, but that also becomes a moat of the business for a lot of people. So uh, I've, been, uh, I've spent like the last 15 years in payments, financial services outside of India and in, in, in US. And I actually see the, some of the, the advancements that have happened in the last three to four years both regulatory as well as the, the IMPS infrastructure as a whole, right? You don't see that anywhere else in the world where you're able to actually transact money in real time from one account to another, right? I think, I think the, now the, what I'm hearing uh, from, from Jitin uh, and, and other people is we need to actually layer on top of that so that it actually starts to make it more easy for consumers to start using that infrastructure. Puneet, I'll just clarify. Across the globe, there's always some regulated entity yeah. who's, who's actually responsible for all those settlements flowing through yeah. and interfaces are allowed to be built which always I think is which is, which is the way forward yeah, which I think that is already happening and I think we will see it more and more in India. Sure. Well, so, so, so clock here is, uh, I thought like we had two more minutes but we are actually eight minutes over. Uh, I was hoping to actually open up some uh, questions for the, um, uh, for the audience but uh, unfortunately we are running late and we have another panel waiting. I wanted to thank you all for, for coming here and sharing and uh, th thank you audience as well.